Halftime at Tallahassee, 21-17. The host Seminoles in front of the Maryland Terrapins. Welcome back, Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. You know, the game started and Maryland kind of came in with a swagger. I thought they were going to go out with a stagger at the end of the quarter, but they got that field goal. Good game the first half. It, it was, and, and it played into Maryland's needs, that is get up quickly on the road against the, the big gorilla in the ACC, and they did, 14-0. Now they're down at halftime. It's going to be interesting to see how they come back out, if Ralph can get them back and say, hey, we can go out and win the second half. All right, Chris Ricks has been impressive at quarterback today for Florida State, part of their 163 passing yards. As you take a look at the stats and turnovers, that's a big one right there, as it always is. Remember, Bolwer's interception not only turned things around, it went straight to the end zone with it. And that is what got Florida State back in the ballgame. Stein to kick, and Rich Parson, the freshman, is deep. Five yards deep, and he won't bring it out. Take a look at our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Sean Hill has not been as impressive as he's been in the last couple of weeks, but he got Lynch, his big fullback, free on the option for a 65-yard touchdown. I mentioned Chris Ricks's numbers. There they are, two touchdowns and an interception. Tallman Gardner has been a big part of it today with two touchdown grabs. Both quarterbacks have done some good things and some bad things. will be wiped away if they come out and play well in the second half and win the ball game. Riley and Perry flanking Hill and they'll give it off to Riley inside. Jennings and Bolwer will bring him down after a pickup of five as we check in with Lynn. Well, Brad, I talked to Ralph Regions. He came onto the field and he said, we came out and played a great first quarter of football, the intensity that we were looking for. He said, in the second quarter is where we lost it. We just kind of stumbled and staggered around. He challenged his team to come out and play a tough second half of football to lay it all. I said, you lay it all out, I'll take the responsibility for what happened. That's the kind of coach he is. Second down and five at the 25. This is Perry, and he's got a first down run as Jennings brings him down, but not before he got out to about the 32-yard line. And this is a nice way to start the second half. Get out there, run the football, dom control the line of scrimmage. When you, run, when you can run the football, you feel like you can dominate the other team's defense. Remember that 132 rushing yards in the first half, the majority of that came on one play for Maryland, so they haven't exactly lit it up on the ground either. That was a good run for a first down. And just inside the 33, the Terrapins first and 10. Perry in motion. He gets it on the option pitch, and now Perry starting to warm up, ran right up Riley, or rather Parson. Bruce Perry, the ball carrier. He was trying to throw a block for him out there. Bradley Jennings in on another stop. This is the same look that Lynch ran for the touchdown. They gave it to him, didn't give it to him that time, popped it out to Perry on the outside for a gain of about four or five. You can see right there Perry running right up the back of his would-be blocker, the freshman number 22. That's probably the hardest he's been hit all day. <laughs> Second down at six. At the 37. Hill with a nice play fake. Rolls and throws and throws a strike. First down, got it out to Scooter Monroe. Nice play. I love the play. A play action fake, and then you roll out. Now the wide receiver runs about 20 to 25 yards downfield. You got a fake over here, and then get outside the pocket. Now what the receiver, the receiver knows this is going to take a lot of time. So he goes down about 20 yards and then comes back. That play is there all day long. First down in Florida State territory now. Just inside the goal is 48. And again, on the option, Hill will keep it this time. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Alonzo Jackson stayed home, made the stop from his defensive end position. Let's go back to what you touched on a little bit earlier. Now we'll get that after this play. Well, Jackson, 48, does a nice job of staying his ground and making the play. Beats off the block of uh, Brooks. Remember what you said. You touched on it. Bobby Bowden said the third quarter, the beginning of the third quarter, has been our stickler all year. We yep. can't let a team get the opening kick and take it down the field. Here's Maryland. In Florida State territory. Second down and 10. Hill's going to flip it out there to Perry. Dropped another one. Let's see. Scramble for the ball. That was not a lateral, though. And we check in Times Square Stadium in New York with John. Right here on the Burger King update. Michigan against Iowa. You knew Michigan got the touchdown late on the punt block. Well, here on a punt return, Chris Oliver hands it off to C.J. Jones. 
And watch the speed as he just pulls away from all the Wolverines to open the lead to 17-7. That's where it stands now. Brad. Shaking up the Big Ten a little bit. That'd be a big win for Iowa. And Kirk Ferns. Third down at 10 for Maryland. Opening drive, third quarter. Here comes a blitz on Hill. Going to lay it out long. He's got Williams out there. And he made the catch. Huge play. Jafar Williams just outfought the corner. And it's a big play down inside the 15. We've got a blitz coming on the inside. And on the outside, you've got Tatum number three in single coverage. Tatum's the one that got beat a couple weeks ago against North Carolina. He doesn't see the ball. You can be as close to the receiver as you want, but if you don't see the ball, you can't defend him. Third catch for Williams, second time. He's done it on third down. That was a 36-yarder to the 12. Huge play. Maryland trying to regain the lead here. Perry, wide open for him off right tackle. The door closed as he got to about the eight-yard line. Abdul Howard and Kendall Polk make the stop. Watch these guys over here. They're just going to follow these running, the, the uh, offensive linemen on that side, Bryant and Crawford. Huge hole over there. And then because it's down inside the 10-yard line, the defensive backs are playing up closer to the line of scrimmage. Come up and make the play. Ninth play of the Maryland drive to open quarter number three. Second down and six. Hill, long stretch, handoff, Perry. Broke a tackle, he'll score! Touchdown, Maryland! This is the most points they've ever scored against Florida State. The previous best they could do was 21. They've got 23 in the lead and the extra point coming up. And was that an impressive drive? You can just see Ralph Friedgen talking to these guys, getting in their heads, the attitude. All year we've worked hard for this, for this moment right here. The discipline, the toughness, the mental toughness to go back out and reestablish the dominance in this ballgame. No back point after is good. 11 minutes and 8 seconds as Perry got some good blocking. And number one found himself an opening and then went airborne. Touchdown, Maryland. gets to the race car. Seville STS. The fusion of design and technology. Cadillac. You can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip and chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Unleash the freak, but the Steelers plan to ride the bus. Titans, Steelers, Monday Night Football at 9, 6 Pacific on ABC. Ralph Ragin's 12th ranked Terrapins just went 80 yards in nine plays to take the lead again. If they can hold on and win this thing, he'd be the owner of the best start by a first year coach in ACC history. I think a lot of you remember Fred Goldsmith, the Duke, back in 94, started 7 0, which is what Ralph has done to this point. But a lot of football left. But that was a good-looking drive to open up the third quarter. That was a very impressive drive. That You know, the first drive of the third quarter says so much about the halftime and what the players and the, the commitment and the coaching staff do when they come back out. And that was, that was huge. 
the biggest play on that drive is that third and ten where Jafar Williams got behind Tatum for that 36 yard gain. Somebody better get on that ball. Thornton finally comes up and covers it. A high kick and came down and he got on top of it at about the 22 yard line. Especially when you go back to the play just prior to the end of the first half when field they goal. kicked the field goal. So they got three points there on a second try and then they come out and they score. So they got 10 points before Florida State gets their hands on the ball. That's exactly right. So first down now for the Seminoles. As Bob said, it's been a wait for them to get their hands on the football. And Ricks play action on first down. Going to go deep. Got a man out there, and he's got him. And it's Tolman Gardner again. 21 to the 21. What a day this kid's having. Yes, sir. Chris Ricks is really bonding with Tolman Gardner. I don't know what it is, but sometimes the outside receiver, he's just going to run right by him on the outside. Sometimes a quarterback and a receiver just have a, a, a karma, something they just click, they, the personalities. Gardner was one a couple weeks ago in North Carolina was really getting on Chris Ricks, saying you're a better player than that, you know, come on. There's going to be an offside. On Maryland, that'll be a free five yards, and that's going to move it in the red zone. 56-yard pass play, by the way, to Tolman Gardner on a pass that couldn't have been much better. Well, let me tell you what happened at halftime. Gardner came over to uh, <laughs> to one of the Bowdens, Jeff Bowden or Bobby, and said, hey, I can beat that guy over there. Contact, Just straight down the field. On the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. We still have first down. And the Gardner right now is cutting up the bushes. Four catches, two touchdowns, 24 plus per grab. First down and five now for the Seminoles after the penalty. And Ricks looking to change things up. Trying to get word to his three wide receivers. Maddox, uh, maybe two yards. E.J. Henderson up over the top to help on the stop. Bob, I think that last play was uh, one of the things you were talking about in the maturation of a quarterback. Ricks came up to the line of scrimmage, saw something he didn't like. This time, instead of just running the play, he carefully looked around. He had enough time on the clock, made the change. The line call made the change. They didn't pick up yard, but they didn't make a mistake. Yep. Yep. Didn't lose yardage. Second down and four. Bell and Gardner and we got single coverage out here on these two guys. If he wants to throw a fade, Javon Walker's up there on top. He's going to come this way with a fade to Gardner. Nice play defensively by Denon Wilson. Just underthrew it a little bit, just a tad. Gardner went up for it, but Wilson knocked it away. Fans booing here. They wanted the pass interference. Bob called the play perfectly. You want to throw this ball high and to the outside, and he was underthrown. And, you know, you, you want to jump ball. Your guy's going to see it, and if their guy doesn't see it, he can make a play on it. Third down conversion's not very good. Third and four. This is where they like the slant, or at least Ricks has been effective with it today. Watch your blitz right here. Quarterback keeper on the draw. Oh, it was free. Yep. There was too many guys lined up over there, and... Um, you just, just from being the quarterback, I can just tell you that there's too many guys over there and somebody sneaking around the hen house. Charles Hill and Marlon Moye Moore made the stop, and that's going to bring out the field goal unit. Bobby doesn't like settling for, for field goals. He had a great, great shot at the touchdown with the fade route to Gardner. Bathia is eight out of nine on the year, and he'll try a 31-yard kick to try to tie this thing up. There, kick is good too, and we got a tie football game. Eight minutes and 51 seconds. The remaining third quarter. It's Maryland 24, Florida State 24. Twenty years now. Where'd they go? Need help with us? I can do it. Twenty years. I don't know. I mean, you just caught an edge. It happens. I sit and I wonder sometimes. Year after year.
after year, it's good to have someone you can depend on. Chevy. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Great. Credit card bill. Look at these fees. Honey? One rate for purchases, higher rate for cash advances, and those telemarketers. Relax. We switched to Capital One's new no-hassle card. Introducing Capital One's new no-hassle platinum card. No balance transfer fees, no telemarketing, one low fixed rate. Honey? What's in your wallet? How can you provide for the future of the people who depend on you? With the power of Pacific Life. For over 130 years, Pacific Life has improved the lives of millions with investments, annuities, and insurance. Because careful planning today can help them reach their dreams tomorrow. Discover the power of Pacific Life. Our Pacific Life game summary in this one. We've had a little bit of everything, including big James Lynch going 65 yards for a touchdown. Florida State came back in a matter of three minutes, put up an offensive score. Bullwares return for a touchdown. Then the penalty that cost three just before halftime. On the second kick, 51-yarder by Novak was good. Perry put Maryland in front to open the third quarter with that touchdown. But Florida State has just come back to hit a field goal of 31 yards, and we are dead even. 8.51 remaining third quarter. What? If you like offense, it's impressive coming out the second half. Both offenses take the ball and move down the field. Maryland got a touchdown. Florida State almost got one, got three points. Here's a very short kick and fumbled at the 13. Ball's loose. Florida State's got it. There's a guy that's been playing great special teams all day long. Tried to save the punt from going in earlier, and Hetzel just came up with a huge play. This was a poor kickoff that turns into a good thing for Florida State. His knee hits the ball, knocks it forward, and Chance, Chance is the one that knocked it away right here. This is, this is just inexcusable. I mean, when you're, when you're in a tight, close game, you can't turn the ball over on the inside of the, your 15, 20-yard line. You think that's the biggest play at Gerald Hetzel's college football career, I'd say. For sure. Just outside the 15, Florida State with a first down. Jones tried to run for something on the right side, and he knocked down a couple of people, and he got down near the 10-yard line. That didn't look like it was going anywhere, and all of a sudden, five or six yards later, Jones finally comes to earth. Offensive line for the Seminoles, right side of it, the strong side, Holland and Williams, Donaldson. But look at Jones. Wow. That's the difference between he and Maddox. Greg Jones gave Randell Jones a mouthful, didn't he? Got six, second and four. He stays in there. Two tight end set for the Knowles. Down inside the Maryland 10, trying to regain the lead. Greg Jones again. And going to be close to a first down. I don't think he got it. Greg Jones on the carry. Charles Hill made the stop. It's going to be awfully close, though. They needed to get down just outside the five and as you can see that's right about where they are and close enough to look at I think. We had a graphic there very briefly which showed that Maryland's got three turnovers in the ball game and that's and, and Florida State only has one. Maryland came into the ball game leading the nation or second in the nation in turnover margin and leading the nation in takeaways on defense. It's been just the opposite here today. When they played and beat Georgia Tech up in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, Georgia Tech turned the ball over six times. And when Florida State lost to Miami, they turned the ball over six times. And when they lost to uh, North Carolina, they turned it over five times. So you get a little thing, what we're talking about little, here. A little pattern there. If you turn the ball over, <laughs> you're going to lose the That's football right. game. Third down and the length of the ball. McCray and Jones in an eye backfield behind Ricks. It'll be McCray, the fullback. He's got the first as he had to get to the five, and he got there. Well, McCray is the short yardage man, and don't think that uh, Maryland doesn't know it. He gets the short yardage call either on uh, 
short yardage out in the field or scoring touchdowns. He came in to the game with 16 touchdowns. So if you get down there near the goal line, look for McCray. A true's bells bringing in the play from Jeff Bowden from the bench. That's the formation he's talking about the, when they said the double twos. That's the formation they want so everybody knows ahead of time. They keep the big back Jones in. Bell is the lone wide receiver out there on the left wing. Greg Jones, one stiff arm, cuts inside, touchdown! Good look and run, touchdown Jones. So the fumble recovery on the kick turns into six. Greg Jones from five yards out. And with 6.50 left in the third quarter, Florida State gets back in front. Xavier Bathia, the freshman from Tampa for the point after. Up and good. Pretty darn good ball game. Special teams come up with it. There you go right here. He's going to come upside, but watch the blocking inside here. And then he's going to bounce it to the outside. The block right here. That's what gets it done. The tight ends block. That's Donaldson. Big, strong guy. 243 pounds. A little bit different than Maddox. Gets the heavy hitting inside. The play that set it up, remember. There's the fumble kick. And Jared Hetzel, a junior defensive back out of Bellevue, Florida, on the special teams. Let's give him part of that touchdown. Well, Chris Ricks is having a pretty good day, but he's getting help from his defense and from his special teams, turning the ball over, a short field there for the touchdown. There's the guy that dropped the last one. Doesn't want that to happen again. Points off turnovers, so huge. It doesn't matter where we go, we see it every week. It's, it's, you know, you talk to coaches about the keys to a game, and they'll always talk about turnovers. And uh, sounds Mar like coach speak until something it like does, this happens. Yeah. <laughs> Maryland is 7-0, and they, you know, and their turnover margin is plus 15. They've taken it away 15 more times than they've given it away. Rich Parson camps under this one at the goal line. And Parson took a whack at about the 16. And again, Hetzel was one of the guys down there, number 13. Has he been something on special teams today? Remember, he's the guy that almost saved that punt from going in the end zone earlier. Recovered the fumble a few moments ago, and now is just in on the tackle again. Not too much of a change in expression on Ralph Regan's face all day long, except maybe that field goal to end the first half. He kind of liked that one. First down now from the 18-yard line. Hill steps up in the pocket, goes down. Florida State tracks him down. Alonzo Jackson came storming around with Jeff Womble. And they get to it. Take a look at the defense. Jackson, number 48, on the right side, getting around the redshirt freshman Moore. And he comes up with the other end. Uh, that's Womble, 91. The two of them meeting at the quarterback. First sack of the day for Florida State. Here come the fans again. With 6.05 to go in the quarter and a touchdown lead. Hill, second and long. Throws. Perry's got it. Close to a first down. fourth catch on the day. He's dropped a couple. Here's Perry here. No, no, Perry's over here. Excuse me. He's just going to go over to the right side. Back split. Right there. Just get out there, run the option. Turn around, get up the field. He's dropped a couple that he had on a couple of screen passes that he had. Could have gotten some more yardage out of. Third down about two feet. It's a big third down conversion here. Lynch, the fullbacks behind Hill. Here's the option. Hill will keep it. He's got the first and then some. Abdul Howard tracks him down, but not before he got out to the 31-yard line with a first down run. 
Yeah, I like that call. I really do. You know, you, it's crucial that you pick it up. You got solid blocking over here all the way. Now your quarterback, you got two shots. My quarterback can get out there and run for it, or if it's stuffed up, he can pitch to the back. I, I like that play when it's uh, third and short. So now they get a first down at their own 31-yard line. Got that double wing set in there again. And with that, it's Hill again to keep it going the other way. And picked up about four. Chris Hope made the stop. Let's check in Times Square Stadium in New York and John Saunders. Brad, Michigan with just one loss, trying not to squander the opportunities given them today by Oklahoma and Virginia Tech losing. UCLA's down as well. John Navarre, 77 yards to Tyrese Butler. Gets it inside the five-yard line. On the next play, Chris Perry from three yards out. Michigan down just six. Here it's Maryland down seven. And second down at six as Hill drops to throw. He's going to air one out for Parson. Beg your pardon, that's not Parson. It's Julian Gary incomplete. Rufus Brown was covering. Rufus, uh, Rufus is not uh, play, is in there playing for uh, Tatum, uh, who was out with an injury for a while. Rufus is only 5'9", five, uh, five, 175 pounds. So there's a lot of teams that just like to throw over there and figure that they can beat him. But Mickey Andrews says, you're not small if you don't play small. <laughs> Maryland 7 out of 11 in their third down conversions. Third and six here. Hill with time. And he's completed it out for a first down at the 47-yard line. Nice throw there. That's uh, Whitmer. He was uh, He's a walk-on. He's a fifth-year senior walk-on, and he's had some injuries. Come back inside. There's three guys running out there. That's to confuse the defense. The defense is in a zone coverage. Nice throw, throwing it around the defense. Eight different guy Hill is hooked up with today. And a first down toss to the 47. We're under four minutes in the third quarter. And Florida State wants a timeout. You see Bowler there on the left side of your screen. Were they short a man? Yes. Manuel running out there on the field. So Florida State's got to use a timeout with three minutes, 47 seconds left, third quarter. Mickey Andrews with a frown on his face. Knowles are up seven. Hello? Hello? Circuit City's doing this expo thing, but we're busy. Get what you need. We're out of here. Agreed? Yes. Kevin! We know how you feel. It's Expo 2001. 30 days of non-stop demonstrations of what's hot and what's next in electronics. September 30th through October 31st. Circuit City, we're with you. Have you guys talked since the humiliating kiss? Stop coming at that. I want proof. I understand. Is there something I should know? No. The bomb we're looking for, it's inside of him. What? The crew have a roadblock. Get around. Alias, Sunday at 9, 8 central on ABC. Halloween Wednesday. <laughs> Damon is frightened by guest star Lou Rawls. And then no one else. Oh, a scary new my wife and kids. ABC Wednesday. Bobby Biden pacing that sideline as he's done for so many years. 26 here, looking for win number 320, which puts him in the rarefied air right behind Bear Bryant and another couple of steps behind Joe Paterno, who passed the Bear today with his victory over Ohio State. They're going to have to earn this one for Bobby, though. It's been a tough one. Maryland trailing by seven. He'll play fake in trouble, and he throws that thing away. Ooh, they were coming that time. Bowler putting the heat on Hill. They were and a coming. penalty marker. Did they call a rough in the passer, maybe? Well, there's a flag back there where, where he went down. 
I think they're going to call intentional grounding, Brad. There is no flag on the play. The quarterback <laughs> was outside of the pocket. Okay, that's what it would have been, Swanee, but he was outside the pocket, so they pick it up. Well, that's, that's just a good, um, good call by the official back there. He threw the flag initially. You have to be outside where the tackles normally line up when the ball was snapped. And there's the official on the right side that made the call, and he picked it up. And I think he was outside the pocket. So it's second and 10, ninth play of the drive for Maryland. Straight drop by Hill. Wants to throw a screen and does to Perry with blockers in front. Perry, nice cut back now in the open Gone. field. Down the sideline, one man to beat. He'll get knocked out. Chris Hope saved a touchdown right there. They've had several screens set up to Perry that have looked awfully good. A couple times he dropped the ball, a couple times not. All right, he's inviting the defensive line to get after him. Now, what's the lineman out there in front of him? Brian is 73. Fowler gets out there, the center. Crawford was out there, the tackle. And this is this is getting your, your speedy back out in, out in space. The rear long catch and run for Perry. 48 yards down inside the 15. He stays in as the eye back. And he'll get the call on the ground. Got two or three. Abdul Howard closed the door. See, I don't know about that. I, I, you know, Ralph was a quarterback in high school, and he's not calling the plays right now. But when my man catches a screen pass and runs about 37 yards, don't go back fighting, to him. You give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> Call that play to the fullback or throw it out. You know, throw a pass or something. But if you're going to lead the bad guy in there, give him a break. He stays in for the 11th play of the drive. It's already carrying him 70 yards. Second down and eight. Maryland trying to tie things up here in the third quarter. On the option, Perry again on the pitch. Broke a tackle. Perry, first and goal, Maryland. He's special. He uh, he didn't play last year, Perry. He sat out the year. He was redshirted year because of Lamont Jordan had his big year and. Uh, now it's uh, Perry's turn. Look Here, at the little option. Here's a guy in spring ball that Ralph Regan said, you know, he had one of those little hamstring things. You know how I love guys pulling hamstrings. He said, I didn't think he was tough enough. Yep. And then as the season started, he got better week in and week out. And Perry says quietly, I just give the man what he wants, meaning Coach Regan. And they all love it. First and goal. Two tight ends, everybody stacked in. This is Riley. Got about a yard. And by the, when I said they love him, all of the players speak very highly of Ralph Friedgen, the discipline that he brought in, and, uh, and, and the system that he brought in. Right down to making sure everybody goes to breakfast every morning. Yeah, he, you know, he's a hands-on approach. You know, he's on almost, they say he's honest to a fault sometimes. Second and goal at the two. Here's the option. It's Hill. It's a touchdown. Sean Hill takes it in himself. And we're an extra point away from another tie. Seems, you know, it's, you know, if you know the option's coming on short yardage or goal line, you still can't play it because somebody's got to be accountable to the quarterback. It's coming this way. All you need is a couple yards, and you got it. So that's the sixth rushing touchdown of the year for Hill. And Nick Novak, an all-important point after, coming up, and it's good. A minute and 53 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And this is an ACC battle going on in Tallahassee. Here's Hill, the guy that nobody wanted coming out of high school. Got a couple of offers to play Division II football to be a punter. So he went to... Kansas Hutchinson Community College. He beat out six other quarterbacks. And then an ex-assistant coach at Maryland went down to Hutchinson in search of a cornerback. The coach there said, hey, you need a quarterback? He says, I don't know. They took a look at this kid. Now he's their starter. He just got him in the end zone and tied things up. There were a couple other quarterbacks at Maryland when he got here. And uh, one has since left. And the other one uh, was playing basketball. And uh, Sean Hill is, is playing very, very nicely and is one of the reasons that this team is undefeated this year because he has really played well. The option, the passing game, and more importantly, making good decisions. Sean Hill's the guy that got him in the end zone, but there's the guy that got him close. Perry with the screen pass first 
And then a couple of nifty runs to get it down inside the five. Hill did the rest on the option. And it's tied at 31. Vidad Sukovic will tee it up. An 82-yard march. Man, they've had a couple nice drives in this third quarter. Game's been tied three times. A couple lead chances. Kind of nice, huh? It sure is. Sukovic's kick. A roll down to about the 13. P.K. Sam picks it up. And P.K. Up think, to about the 28. I think when these guys kick off, somebody's letting the air out of the ball because <laughs> nobody can kick it deep anymore. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Cadillac, the fusion of design and technology. Tostitos Scoops, the Dip Lovers chip. Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? And Marriott, your Marriott awaits. The offense awaits for Florida State as they'll work now from the 28-yard line. Already they've seen Maryland put more points up than ever before in an ACC encounter against a team they've never beaten in ACC play. Ricks play action, getting some heat. Chris has got good wheels. He got the corner and run for a block. Mater got him a block across midfield all the way down to the 40-yard line. And he's looking for a flag on the hit at the end. But he'll take what he got, and that was a big play. That's one of the big things that the 16, number 16 this year, could do that the 16 <laughs> last year couldn't do. That's Chris right. Winky is get outside and run the football. He's got a strong arm, but he says, I got to eject. He's got a man open. That was says, Mater. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going. 36-yard scamper for Chris Ricks. And all the way down, they spotted just outside the 36-yard line. So 36 to the 36. With a minute and 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Here's a toss sweep to Maddox, trying to cut back. And they won't let him. Tony Jackson stays home as safety and made the stop as we head to Times Square Stadium and John Saunders. Brad, Michigan and Iowa, this is what you call a terrific grab by Marquise Walker. Navarre with the pass, up with the right hand, taps it back to himself for the touchdown. With the extra point, Michigan now has the lead, 21-20. Brad, back to you. Well, that's a special player and a special catch. Beauty, John. Yeah. Second down and 12 to go. Ricks play action, throws the out, and way out in front of Atrus Bell, incomplete. That one sailed on him again a little bit. Well, he probably did, but you don't know if the receiver was supposed to be out wider than he was mm -hmm. or, or not. But uh, he was open. That was That's the bottom line. So it brings up a third down and a dozen. Bobby's finding out right now what the problem was because he was wide open. And he's probably finding out what this play is. Florida State has not handled third down very well. And then one out of seven after coming in at 44% of the year. Watch these linebackers. Here they come. Ricks trying to buy himself some time on the roll. Can't find anybody open. Keeps it. Gets what he can, which is across the line of scrimmage and maybe down to the 35, maybe the 34-yard line. Yeah, if you, weren't, if you weren't with us at the beginning of the game, we mentioned that this defense of Gary Blackney's uh, for Maryland is a very aggressive, a very attacking, a very disruptive style. They do a lot of blitzing, and it's very confusing for young quarterbacks such as Florida State has playing here today. Chance Gwaltney in to punt. They tried one fake punt earlier in the game. I don't anticipate another. Well, I think he wanted to kick to the corner, but he didn't want to kick it that far out. Yeah. And, oh, man, this is terrible. They might as well have run the ball where they're going to spot this thing yeah. at the 24-yard line. That is a 10-yard punt. You know, they work on this all the time. They really do. They practice. The kickers don't do anything, and they work on this, and they practice it. But still, when you get down in a ball game, the pressure, these kids are only 19, 20, 21 years old, and you, they, have to, you know, they have to perform under pressure. Chance Gwaltney shanks one, and Maryland has the offense back out at the 24-yard line. And they're a man short. Perry comes trotting in. Well, more than trotting, comes sprinting in to get into the lineup. Might be the last play of this quarter. And Hill will throw. Going to throw a fade near side. Monroe way over the top. 
And Jeff Bowden almost made the catch on that one on the sideline. So seven seconds left third quarter. Maryland today as far as their possessions. The last three field goal and two touchdowns and look yeah. at 280 plus yard drives. That field goal was the, the last play of the first half. It kind of got the momentum back to, to their side. A 51 yard kick at the rear long. Shotgun for Hill. Makes it to Riley, pitches it to Perry. Perry gets a headache, but he broke off that and takes another shot takes from another Bowler. headache. <laughs> Man. It's a bigger headache. I don't know how he got rid of that first would-be tackler. And there is a flag I, down. I think they're going to say there was a hit out of bounds. We have disagreed with these kind of calls so many times, it seems, because especially when the second effort of a tailback like that breaks a tackle and starts going down the sideline, Oh, they're going to call it on Maryland. Because I was going to say Bolwer, I thought I had a pretty legitimate shot yeah. to have to tackle yeah, him. Yeah, and I think it was a good hit by Bolwer. So whatever happened, happened after that, and it was against Maryland, not against Florida State, if our preliminary signal from Ron Cherry was pointing in the right direction. Either way, the quarter has come to a close. That part we know. And I think you know it's on Maryland now. And <laughs> if you're a lip reader, you know what Ralph thought of the call. <laughs> Something about fish and chips, I there think he said. Right there's, there, there it comes at yeah. the end. There's a spear job by that's one Brooks. of the offensive that's, linemen, C.J. Brooks. Yeah, it's Brooks hitting out of bounds, and that was what the call was. And so that ends three. What a ball game on the ACC. Seminoles at home trying to hold court. Terrapins trying to continue their undefeated ways. 31 apiece at the end of three. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The magic's gone, isn't it? You need a table for two. And a bubble bath. And some champagne. That'll work. Mary had come out and play rates make this a great weekend to rekindle the flame. Can you make me irresistible? Yeah. Oh. Call 1 800 Marriott. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. Your Marriott awaits. After the 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. The all-new Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. It's awesome. It's such a celebration of life. The young women that if they're diagnosed with breast cancer their life is not over that's what's so miraculous about being here today is that i can walk it i want to keep on living and stay strong because i haven't completed my job yet here this is abc news channel 27 Number one just got his number one thousand yard rushing season ever. Bruce Perry went over a thousand yards the last time he carried. He's got 55 on the ground today and 71 as a receiver. He gets a little breather. His team faces a third down and 18 after that personal foul to end the third quarter. And we 
start the fourth and Tallahassee tied at 31. Sean Hill throws on the run. Got his man, but he had to go to the turf to keep it. Scooter Monroe, and that brings out the punting unit. Brooks Bernard will punt. And Dominic Robinson will drop back deep. Nice kick. Robinson way back to the 26. Got by the first man. Got a block. Down the side. And he's over the 45 to the 46 yard line. 51 yard kick and a 20 yard return. So now Florida State, the defending champs, have the ball 31 31. We talked with Bobby Bowden about the state of the Atlantic Coast Conference. The conference is getting tougher, there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, I've said before, and it's a true statement, until people beat us, they're they, they going to say the conference is no good. I mean, Florida State's in there, they have no, they have no problems. So until people start beating us, they're going to say that, you know? And, and, uh, and like anything, I mean, gee whiz, eventually everybody will beat us. I hope it ain't the same year. <laughs> you know, once, one a year's enough. <laughs> one a year's enough. Well, nobody's ever beaten them at home in conference play, and overall, they're 90, uh, 73 and 3 in conference action since joining in 92. And they've won or shared them all. Exactly. Got a Florida State man down, and it was on that punt return, and I still can't see quite who it is. Number 24, I think. That's B.J. Ward, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the three teams that have beaten Virginia beat them, yep. NC State and North Carolina. Exactly. Virginia in 95, North Carolina State on Chris Wenke's really only bad day maybe ever mm -hmm. as a Seminole when he threw all those interceptions. And then the North Carolina game that we saw them in earlier this year where it was still close at halftime in the third quarter blew up in their face. And there's B.J. up, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas. And he's a little woozy. You know, there are differing opinions, I guess, from people on what this game will do. If Maryland picks off Florida State, does that mean Florida State really is having that bad of a year? Or if Florida State wins, we're Maryland pretenders coming in here. You know, maybe it's a no-win situation. I, I, I don't think Maryland can lose at this point. I mean, they could lose the game, but they think they've played Florida State tough here where it's been tough for everybody to win. Here comes a blitz on Ricks. Chris fires, and he's got a man. Guess who? Tallman Gardner inside the 40. 15-yard pass play, and as you said earlier, you could see it coming. Yeah. He's starting to get a favorite receiver. I, I think he likes Gardner. That's his sixth reception of the day, and he's got two touchdowns with him. Nice protection. Tallman Gardner does something here very nice and simple, Bob. He just keeps coming back to the ball. Yeah. Simple thing that causes a lot of good completions. I, I'm just going to point that out. Tallman's over 100 receiving, including two touchdowns. And here's Florida State down inside the Maryland 40 again. Back to the ground now. And Maddox finally broke one. Nick Maddox is going to have about nine, maybe ten. He finally ran north-south for Florida State, and he picked up almost enough yardage for a first down. Take a look at the offensive line block, and Marambo's in there. Brown is number 54. Holland is the other guard. Doing a nice job blocking. This is the strength of this line. We mentioned it earlier. The strength of the team is that offensive line. Look at these linebackers. You see them all jumping? Then, then Chris jumped out of the way and says, all right, we'll go check off. We'll do something else. Second and a yard. He's going to throw. Here they come. And in and out of the hands of Atrus Bell. Uh, you know, there's something about Atrus from last year to this year. There's just a big difference because last year he had a, he caught 10 touchdown passes as we mentioned and only uh, 20 or 30 catches and uh, this year is a, there's a big difference. It might be something as simple as he's just not a very relaxed player Bob. Uh, he feels like he needs to do more want to do more matter of fact he felt they weren't giving him enough opportunities earlier in the year. Yeah. 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 And they're not throwing me the ball enough. Florida State's just taking another timeout, and that could be huge near the end of this game when you're tied up, and they're down to one T.O. left. 13 minutes left. Tie game, 31 apiece.
Beautiful car. 200 horsepower, V6 engine. It's got your name written all over it. You like it? I love it. I feel a test drive coming on. You ready? I'm ready. I'm done. I want this car. I will take this you, car. You've got to take it for a test drive. No, no, no. I'm going to take the car. I want it. Let's put this thing on the road. Let's go for a test drive. Mm -hmm. Test drive over. I want the car. Chevy Impala. I love this car. We'll be there. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Some guys take their car's performance a little more seriously than others. That's why they turn to Valvoline Sin Power. Synthetic oils, additives, and cleaners. Florida State Clemson. More other regional action next Saturday on ABC. We're working a homicide investigation. Is that okay with you? It's all yours. New faces. New season. There's a good chance that was my partner. Same attitude. Let's go, Junior. Who's he? Sipowitz. A two-hour premiere event. NYPD Blue, Tuesday, November 6th at 9, 8 central on ABC. Viewer discretion advised. Finally, our show's back, Bob. NYPD Blue. There you go. <laughs> The man Sipowitz. It's been black and blue on third down here on third down conversions for Florida State today. Third down of the yard. On the ground they go, and McCray got the first. The dependable fullback. Very seldom dropped for negative yardage. And number 15, the 230 pounder out of Jacksonville, picks up a big first down for Florida State. So they move the sticks and they continue to the drive as they look to regain the lead. Florida State has run the ball very well the last two weeks. They've gotten over 500 yards the last two weeks against Miami and Virginia. Averaged like 30 first downs per game. So now it's down to the 28 of Maryland. Play action for Ricks. Might want it all. Going to the end zone to Gardner. Got him! Touchdown! That's three. That's three. Twenty-eight yard touchdown pass from Rick to Gardner. Bathia in for the point after. Right down the middle. They haven't been nine-time champions for nothing. We've got Gardner out here on the outside, single coverage. He's just going to go down, break to the inside, and deep out to the post. I mean, to the, to the corner, goes to the post, and then back out. This is a great throw. Over the top against Wilson, who is subbing for the Okamawan, who is the quarterback that, that was uh, injured and not uh, here today. I guess you could say that uh, this, there's one gardener who's found fertile soil in the end zone <laughs> all day long. Yeah, stop he, turned that, he turned that corner inside out. <laughs> as, long as, as long as Renegade doesn't apply any fertilizer, we'll leave it alone. Uh, 140 yards. All right, you guys, just stop it right there. <laughs> what would he do? Florida State loses. <laughs> Six catches. 140 yards, three touchdowns, as you see, all career bests yeah, for yeah. that young fellow. That's, he's come of age, and so is Chris Ricks. 12 of 19, 250 yards, and three touchdown passes. So a 54-yard march in just five plays, capped off by the touchdown. And it's 38-31. And Chris Ricks, who a couple of weeks ago, some of his teammates were even questioning all of his turnovers. He's getting a lot of high and low fives over there on that bench right now. Here's Rich Carson going to bring it out. A little delay. And from five yards deep, was it a mistake? Uh -huh. It was. Let's hope. Parsons is a true freshman. Hasn't been doing this very much. 
Our Pacific Life game summary. A lot of action. The slant pass to Gardner was good for the touchdown. Another one to Gardner tipped on a slant for a touchdown. And then a post corner and a perfect throw and an even better catch. Touchdown. Thirty-eight, thirty-one, Florida State. Perry, the tail behind Lynch, and the crowd getting loud. Now Lynch had to turn around and say something to him. Perry fumble, loose ball. Florida State scoops it up. Rufus Brown's got it. Rufus Brown with a fumble recovery. That's the fourth turnover for Maryland today. There's a flag at the end of the play, but I don't think it has anything to do with the fumble itself. Rufus Brown, the sophomore corner out of El Paso, Texas. The guy Bob said isn't the biggest guy in the world, just made a big play. Illegal block on the return of the fumble, I think, is what they're calling. Yeah. On the return, we're blocking the back by the return team. Ten yards, first down. They'll take the possession and not worry about the penalty. The defense. Coming up big for Florida State. They've already had an interception for a touchdown. Dockett, number 45, knocks it loose. Dockett was in the doghouse. He had two penalties, and one of the penalties led directly to a long field goal just before the half. So Darnell out of the doghouse, maybe into the penthouse with that play. That turns the ball back to the Florida State offense. I don't think one good play eliminates those other two <laughs> dumb ones. <laughs> yeah, we still got 12 minutes left. That's true. Here's a give to Jones. Florida State now with the lead of seven. Would love to use some clock and keep it on the ground. A reminder, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I tell you what, you can seal the lid on who's going to win it for Florida State, in my opinion, but we still have a ways to go. Certain wide receiver, number 21. That might be the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know Smarty's already got his vote in. Second down and six. Ricks lost one to Bell. Not quite. Jerome Cox was out there covering. You know, uh, my vote might be going to the guy that's throwing him the football, He's too. He's not right? having a bad day, that's for sure. Yeah. This, this is maybe coming of age day for uh, Chris Ricks. Still made some uh, some silly plays, but uh, those are getting fewer and fewer, and the big plays are becoming more often. I don't want to make a mistake here now, as they've worked it inside the Maryland 25. into the act, 22 yards. Single coverage on the outside, Wilson 13, never sees the ball coming. And then when you've got a guy that can jump like Walker can, it's just, it's just single coverage. Bob Brad, it's just so many good things coming together for this football team. A quarterback who has got confidence in the receiver, a line who's giving him time, the state's passing attack has only given you pieces every every once in a while a little bit of something but not all of it today they put it all together they celebrated a little bit too much after the touchdown so Bathy is going to try a 35 yard extra point here and Walt need a hold there's what's called getting a big extra point 11 minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the ball game. The defending ACC champs are not giving up that crown easy, are they? Touchdown pass number four for Ricks. Not a bad day for number 16, 45-31. Hey, how's it going? We're in sync. You know, uh, the group in sync. 
No. Uh, we're just going door to door to say thanks. Yeah, for talking to your kids about drinking. You see, even with all our success, you're still a bigger influence on your kids than we are. Dad, who was that? Just some guys. Lance, Joey, something about a sink. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Cars you can depend on. The cars that last. You never have to look too far. Chevy, we'll be there. Always with you. Yep. And I like you, and we need you. So Florida State set to kick off after turning the fumble into points again. And the points off turnovers have become huge as the Seminoles now have a two touchdown lead with 11 17 left. Rich Parson, back deep. They're going to squib this one down the middle. And who's going to take it? Parson will take it at the 12. Goes to the far side. Found himself a little bit of an alley. Got a decent return out of it. B.J. Ward, who was shaken up earlier, came out and made the stop on the special teams. Denard Wilson's the guy that gave up that touchdown. Here's Coach Friedgen still coaching. Yeah, you know what he's telling him? He's just saying, hey, Denard, you know, you're a good football player. Don't get down. You, we need you. You're going to be around here for the next couple of years. we got a lot of football players. Learn from that situation. The next time you do it, you've got to see the ball, and you've got to go up and knock it down. But don't get down on yourself. Ralph is a hands-on coach. He knows everything that's going on. He wants to be involved in everything. His team has to get involved offensively in a hurry now. They trail by 14. Here's the option and the keep by Hill. And he's got 10 or 11 before Rufus Brown brings him down. So first down run. They can't get it all in one big gulp here. So they've got 11 minutes to work with. Nebraska knocked off previously undefeated Oklahoma, snapping a 20-game winning streak for the Sooners, the defending champs. Stanford, UCLA trying to mount a comeback, but uh, the Cardinal trying to knock another undefeated off. Florida now has added a touchdown in Georgia in the world's largest cocktail party. We may not have an undefeated team left at the end of the year. <laughs> you might be right, partner. Here's the option pitch, and it is to the freshman, Parson. And he got to about the 48, maybe the 49-yard line. Bowlweir ran him down. You know, we started to say something earlier about uh, Maryland and, and would they, you know, I said something about, you know, I don't think they could lose coming out of here. They mean they lose the game, but I think they've done enough. I, they've scored 31 points. They've taken Florida State into the fourth quarter and they've challenged them at home, a place where they've only lost one game in the last 55 games. Here's a fade, man's wide open, Williams, oh, he dropped the ball. That was a sure touchdown that he dropped. Malcolm Tatum was two yards back, and Jafar just dropped it. Jafar's a little bit of a project. They've been working with him. They feel like eventually he's going to be a great receiver, and that's why he stays out there on the field. But you've got to make the easy plays as, e as much as the difficult plays. This was a touchdown. He had Tatum beat by 10 yards. Ooh. Five drop passes today by Maryland. There's one upset wide receiver with himself. And a third down now, and six. Going to have to hustle. Well, time out. He's going to have to waste one, too. Yeah. I mean, that's tough. Mentally and emotionally on an offense, when you see you're down by two, and with that one throw, you're only down by one touchdown if he catches it and runs it in. Just under 10 minutes remaining in the ball game. Ralph Friedgen's troops are going to have to pull an amazing comeback here. They trail by 14. 
beautiful car. 200 horsepower, V6 engine. It's got your name written all over it. You like it? I love it. I feel a test drive coming on. You ready? I'm ready. I'm done. I want this car. I will take this you, car. You've got to take it for a test drive. No, no, no I'm going to take the car. I want it. Let's put this thing on the road. Let's go for a test drive. Mm -hmm. Test drive over. I want the car. Chevy Impala. I love this car. We'll be there. Chili's famous baby back ribs, double basted with barbecue sauce. Well, when I got hurt in this work, I'm glad I had supplemental insurance. Supplemental insurance? What's that? Half flat. Well, even the best insurance doesn't give you cash to cover things like lost pay, other expenses. This does. What does? Half flat. Should ask about it at work. Really? And what's it called? Half flat. Uh, Aflac. Ask about it at work. Aflac! Darkness falls across the land. The witching hour is at hand. The Peanuts gang will do its best to put your fears to rest. It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Biggest third down of the game, obviously, for the Terrapins of Maryland. Third down along six from their own 48 yard line. Where he goes to Perry. Can he beat the defenders? Uh -uh. Too many. Too many out there. And Garnett and Gold. Brown is there first, and then Jennings and company join him. And it's fourth down. That was not the design place to throw the football. People wonder why you throw it behind. It's third and six, and you throw it behind the line of scrimmage. He wanted to throw it downfield. He had one read, two reads, and three reads, and then they were all covered. And then he comes out to the outlet so he wouldn't have to take a sack. kick. Dominic Robinson is back deep. He had a nice return last time. He got his hands on it. Bernard just belted this one. And Robinson lets it go. Goes all the way to the end zone. Got too much on it. So it's a touchback. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. That's where we'll see him after we check in with John. Brad, Michigan and Iowa back and forth again. This time for the Wolverines. John Navarre 13 yards to Sean Thompson. He rumbles in for the touchdown, so Michigan has regained the lead with about eight minutes to go, 29 to 26. Meantime, Stanford had a 31 to 7 lead over UCLA. Their lead is down to just three. UCLA trying to remain unbeaten. Oklahoma lost their unbeaten ways. So did Virginia Tech today. Maryland might have the same fate happen here in the next 10 minutes. They're still hitting people, though. I wonder if John's shown any highlights of my bowl makers today. They won. Homecoming. Oh, yeah. You should have been there back at your frat house singing. <laughs> <laughs> your, your old Purdue song. Well, they've got a good season going. They do. Hans had uh, do. two touchdown passes and ran for two. It's post Drew Brees era. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to the Rose Bowl last year. And everybody thought they'd be down. They're, they're doing a good job in there. My man Joe Tiller. Second down at 13. We're down to 840 left in the ball game. Ricks trying to go to his tight end incomplete. And 8.33 and a long third down coming up. Bobby Bowden, if you didn't hear earlier this week, signed a contract extension. It's going to take him through 2004. I kidded him about it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, an extension uh, of a contract and uh, uh, yeah, a little race. <laughs> <laughs> that cracked us up a little rage. <laughs> we kind of, Brad kind of snuck that in at the end after about 10 or 12 questions. And Bobby has dodged that question with the media, you know, for two weeks. <laughs> Here's Ricks. He's going on top. Scott Bell out there. This time he made the catch. Maybe that'll get Atrus off the snide. He knows he's missed some. And that was a tough catch to make. He had to look straight back over 
his shoulder to make this grab. This is just one one on one with Cox. He throws the ball to the outside, a little underthrown, and he just stays with it. Swanee, that's got to be about the toughest catch there is to make, isn't it? That is one of the most difficult catches in the world to make. You're almost doing a back bend, and you wonder how a guy cannot make some easy catches, then come up with the most phenomenal catch maybe of the ball game. That might be just what the doctor ordered for him to kick start him for the rest of the season. Give me determination and uh, give me a second chance attitude. First down out to Maryland 36. Here's a toss to Jones. Ball security and clock management now for Florida State's what they're thinking with a little over eight minutes left and a 14 point lead. Getting back just for a moment to that contract situation for most people around college football that pay attention to that sort of thing. Bobby Bodden, Steve Spurrier, and Bob Stoops are the $2 million men now. Bobby started at, what, 37.5? Is that what he told us? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, after 300 and what looks like is going to be 320 wins, I don't think uh, if, if they deserve it, those three guys I mentioned probably all deserve it. There's no doubt about that. Second down and eight. Bobby pretty much put this football program together and on the map by playing big name teams on the road and finally starting to upset a few and then got a big time schedule and then joined the ACC and over those 26 years top five in the country 14 years in a row nobody ever do that again and played the national championship game three straight years including losing to Oklahoma last year in the Orange Bowl played in four of the last five years that's something. Won 10 games, 14 years in a row. Third down and five here. They will throw. And they're going to lob it over there on a fade. And this one's gone, and it's Bell, and it's a touchdown. How about that? Confidence catch number one. Beautiful catch number two. Florida State now is just seven minutes away from making one more team find a loss in the right-hand column. Boy, when it rains, it pours. I guess so. <laughs> Florida State and Chris Ricks were just dying to get some of these touchdowns a couple weeks ago against Miami, and now they're coming in fives. Extra point to try to make it 52-31 is good. Man, oh, man. Watch him now. Take a look at this. Swanee, watch this. He's going to get down there, and he's going to he's going to slow up. Right there, he slows up to wait for the ball to come to him, and then he kind of pushes off of the defensive back. That's a very veteran move, Bob, a yep. very heads-up smart move, and very much like what you talked about before when the receiver puts his body between the receiver and the ball. Yeah. What he did was slowed up, so that ball will come down on the other side of his body, and he can make the catch. Yep. And interestingly enough, when he came to the sideline, all of his teammates are right there. Rich was there. They're patting Bell on his back because they understand what he has been through this year, not having made the catches, not having come through the way he wants to come through. And now, two catches in a row, he finds himself in the end zone. He was in a slump. You know, he was in a, some kind of a slump, and nobody knows why. Everybody goes through it sometimes at different positions, but I think you've just seen Atrus Bell come out of it. For whom the bell tolls, that's five touchdown passes for Chris Ricks, and he's mixed it up. Three to Gardner, one to Walker, one to Bell, and it's 52 to 31. And there's a big smile, and you like seeing that because he's had his moments that uh, certainly weren't this good, and well, now he's put together, like you said earlier, maybe this is the coming of age game right here, and we're watching. Chris, in the in the in, in the two losses this year, he had uh, nine turnovers in the two losses: the one to Florida, I mean, one to Miami, and one to North Carolina. Here's a kick. Randall Jones will take it. He's going to try to throw it back. Uh oh, this isn't going to work out too well. Threw it to Jamal Chance and threw it all the way over to the two-yard line. Well, let me explain that. That was a lateral. That was a lateral, not a pass, because it was a backward. It's called a backward uh, a pass, which is a lateral. So whether he catches it or whether he catches it on the bounce, he could still pick it up and run with it. He just couldn't find a handle over yeah. there. Here's Randell Jones. 
And that's why he's not a quarterback. Well, he was a quarterback. He was, <laughs> he was, he was a starting quarterback at, at, at Maryland when he got there. He was a, his true freshman year. He was a starting quarterback. Now so, he's the starting free safety. You can see why. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, he had to take his gloves off, you know, to throw the ball. Now they're buried at their own two-yard line. And Hill will have to work with crowd noise behind him from the shotgun. He's clapping his hands. He wants the ball. The center can't hear him. And now they snap it. And Perry takes it. And too, too they whistle. Time. Yeah. That played Ed. Hill was asking for it. His center wasn't hearing and wasn't seeing him ask for the snap. Brad and Bob, this crowd has been unbelievable all day. Enthusiastic, but I have not been down here on the football field to hear this crowd this loud in a number of years. I think they understand what their team is going through. And listen to the support now. Backed up to the one. Perry trying to break out, got him a little bit of room out to the five. Bobby Bowden had to talk to his booster club recently, and he said he went in there with the idea. He was going to tell him, you know what? We have to we have to realize that we're just like common folk now because we've lost a couple games. He said nobody laughed. They weren't used to Florida State being in that common ground. They're used to being the rarefied air of the national championship hunt. And now the fans, I think, are responding after being jaded and spoiled for so many years. Finally, this team has awakened today at home and where they have never lost a conference game, it does not appear they're going to have that problem again today either. Well, we're going to see him next week at Clemson, and all of a sudden that becomes the game in the ACC, coupled with Georgia Tech and North Carolina Thursday night on ESPN. All right, they're 5-2 and two now if they win this game. They go to Clemson, then they got a big game with Florida over in Gainesville, and then they've got Georgia Tech, the makeup game, on December the 1st, so they still got a lot of football to play. A lot of work left. Bobby thinks he can win the ACC Conference if he doesn't lose another game. Thinks he'll be the highest rated team in the ACC if that happens. John Hill's got to get rid of this thing. It's a good thing he was out of the pocket again over there in the end zone. Or that would have been a safety from intentional grounding in the end zone, but he was way over near the sideline, just got rid of it. And they're going to have to give it up. With 5.26 left, it's fourth down. And shags it down at the 42. Dominic Robinson back into Maryland territory and a flag. Gonna have a illegal block on the return, I'm sure. And Florida State, five minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the ball game, away from a big, big win. And one that would move Bobby Bowden past Glenn Pop Warner. I guess Bobby's not getting too old. Uh-uh. He's uh, 71 years old, and he lost a couple of games, but uh, he's won a couple more. Beat Virginia, he's going to win this one. There's Pop Warner, 319 tied with Bobby Bowden. And Bobby is five minutes away from moving one step closer to a guy that was one of his heroes, Bear Bryant, who, of course, had 323, and Joe Paterno, who joined the top of the ladder today with his victory over Ohio State for 324. We got a timeout with 514 remaining, and it is Florida State 52, Maryland 31. The road to success has always had its bumps and curves. Don't get off track. Now is the time you really need personalized advice and better information. Morgan Stanley. Move your money. Get well connected.
discover a sensation as real as the streets. Mountain Dew Code Red. Beautiful car. 200 horsepower, V6 engine. It's got your name written all over it. You like it? I love it. I feel a test drive coming on. You ready? I'm ready. I'm done. I want this car. I will take this you, car. You've got to take it for a test drive. No, no, no I'm going to take the car. I want it. Let's put this thing on the road. Let's go for a test drive. Mm -hmm. Test drive over. I want the car. Chevy Impala. I love this car. We'll be there. 5-14 remaining in the ball game. Let's go down to Lynn. Bobby, your football team is playing extraordinarily well. Chris Ricks, it seems like he got everything turned around in this ball game. He sure is. Uh, you know, they've turned the ball over. I want to, this is going to be a reverse right here. I want you to watch this reverse. Watch, okay. Are you watching it? Yeah, who's going to get the ball here? Uh, number one, we'll probably lose 50 yards since I called it. <laughs> That's Crefonzo Thorpe to the... Didn't lose 50, but he only gained about three. Just made a mess, yeah. <laughs> Bobby, early in the first half, you decided to open up the ball game. It did not work for you, but you tried that fake punt. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, we, we needed something to happen, you know? And uh, it, 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 it did, did not work, but uh, yeah, we were able to come back and win the game. They turned the ball over. Maryland has not been turning the ball over. They did what we've been doing, that's turning the ball over. Can't win like that. H.U. Spells made a couple of big catches. Were you trying to get him the ball, trying no. to get his confidence together? Well, we, in a way we were. We did want to hope to get him the ball, but we don't specifically pick a guy out and try to get him the ball. Okay, uh, Coach. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Thank you. All right, Bobby, go back to work. <laughs> Here's Maddox inside. I think Bobby was enjoying it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I think Bobby wanted to talk some more. I think that's his favorite part of coaching sometimes. <laughs> well, when you're up, uh, when you're up by uh, 21 points, yeah. Time permitting, reminder to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. John and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the country. And Bobby's still on the headset. Third down at five. And there's an opener, and I think that's a first down run, and that might be the big one that Florida State needed. Nick Maddox wanted to keep going, but all they really need to do is move the sticks and use the clock. Here's a look at the first seven games that Maryland won, uh, especially Georgia Tech was impressive there and North Carolina, although they weren't playing as well. They've got uh, Troy State next week. They have Clemson at home and then NC State. So, uh, you know, uh, I think Ralph uh, is looking forward to, well, next week, obviously, but if they can beat Clemson and NC State and finish 10-1, and one, uh, that would be a great year, first year for, for them. Maddox got a hole again and gets inside the 40 to the 38. Check in with Swanee again. Well, Brad, Ralph Friedman has come in and done a great job, not just on the football field, but also where he counts a lot in college programs in dollars and cents. He's in increased the average attendance for home games by 8,600, projected out to 60,000. And look, if you look at ticket sales, T-shirts, hats, parking, meals, just those few items, the economic impact of what he's done will be $4.8 million to that program. And they haven't sold out a ball game yet. So I think we have to look down the road and say, this man's doing a great job for the team. He'll continue to move the program forward and have great success. Yep, no doubt about you it. You think Swanee added up all those numbers? You know, Swanee is kind of a numbers kind of guy. I wonder how you got all those numbers. Yep. So I added it all up. I, I, I pulled all those numbers together. Yeah. I said, okay, here's the impact. That doesn't even include, like, hotels. Uh, if they change the logo, everybody wants to buy even more of the items with yeah. the licensed product. And uh, the they actually sell out the stadium. I mean, they've got 150,000 alumni living in the Beltway. Yeah. And the stadium holds 46,000. I mean, Maryland, if you want your program to do well, get into the program. There you Show go. up. Yeah. <laughs> Second down at five. Gives to McCray. And William McCray inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy. The cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. Chili's baby back ribs, flame grilled and double basted with barbecue sauce. And Budweiser, who salutes America's designated drivers. 
As the sun goes down and the moon comes out over Tallahassee, the sun's about to set on the undefeated record of the Maryland Terrapins. As they came in, riding high at 7-0, and as Bob said, they have played very well, and they didn't just show up. They did come on a mission, but the mission's going to be unsuccessful today against the defending ACC champions who seem to have found their way. 52 to 31. Yeah, they didn't get what they wanted coming in, but I think still they got some respect. Uh, three quarters, through three quarters, this was still a ball game. And Maryland in the past have not been any challenge for Florida State whatsoever. They came in here and they played Florida State uh, tooth and nail through the first three quarters. They can hang their heads high, and I think, you know, I always learn more from losing than I ever did from winning, and I think Friedgen will take that approach, and he'll go back and they'll learn from this, and uh, they'll be a tough ball club the rest of the way. McCray, the fullback, is trying to use the clock. And Florida State still is going to be perfect at home in conference play. Even though, as Bob said, the 54 game on beaten streak went the last time by the boards when we were here a couple of weeks ago. They'll maintain their supremacy at home against conference competition with this one today. And it sets up a big showdown. Bowden and Bowden will have the Bowden Bowl down at Death Valley next week. That's where... Bob and Lynn and I'll be. We hope you uh, join us for that one because if you haven't seen Woody Dantzler play, although he struggled a little bit the last couple of weeks, he is one exciting football player. And we'll see him and now a Florida State team that has renewed vigor and still dreaming of another ACC title. Our Chevrolet Mo players of the game, Bruce Perry, who did a nice job on the ground and as a receiver today, went over 1,000 yards rushing. And Tallman Gardner, and I know we wanted to give two or three or four out to Florida State because you don't have many quarterbacks that throw five touchdown passes, but you don't have many receivers that go six for 140 and three scores, all career highs, as those two, that battery of Ricks and Gardner is really what won this football game for Florida State. So Chevy will donate $1,000 to each university's general scholarship fund. And uh, those fellas' names, our congratulations to them. Here's Hill down the middle. And close to a first down with 34 seconds and the clock winding down. They momentarily stop the clock to move the chains. Hill throwing. Just overshot his intended receiver. Monroe out there. I just wonder if this game would have been any different if Jafar Williams would have caught that ball. Uh, when they were down yeah. by two, he was wide open and, it, you know, would have made it a one touchdown game, but uh, they didn't catch it. And that's the things you can't look back. you got to look forward. And I think that's the thing that Ralph will have with these young players with uh, Maryland. You know, this is we're building a program. You go through this stuff. When you play tough play, when you play tough teams, you got to make the plays when you have the opportunity. Sean Hill flips it out. It's complete. Trying to get out of bounds is Matt Murphy. Rufus Brown is over there to help on the stop. And the clock winding down. I got time for maybe another play or two. And they will fall from the unbeaten ranks, as a couple other teams have already done today. And more may follow. Hill pumps and looks and comes complete. And that one ends the ball game. Florida State holds advantage at home. Bobby Biden moves into the number three spot all time with another victory. Don't forget, Smart One Skate America, the USA's Michelle Kwan and Sarah Hughes at the field in the season's first competitive skating event on ABC tomorrow at 2.30 Pacific. Florida State a winner over Maryland, 52-31. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. That's going to wrap it up from Tallahassee. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports continuing the tradition.